I always say like if, if running a startup uh, is not a sprint but a marathon, I'd say running an edtech startup is more like an Ironman. Uh, it takes really a long time uh, to be successful because just consumer success takes longer. My name is Bernard Niesner, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Buzu. We're one of the world's largest language learning platform. We have our own courses in 12 different languages, which are powered by AI. And then our users can practice their skills with the community of our over 100 million users from 190 different countries. So Buzu started uh, within an MBA of IA Business School. Uh, I was doing the MBA there. I met there my co-founder, Adrian, and we came up with this idea of Buzu also because Facebook was coming into Europe at that time. And we felt that it makes a lot of sense to actually combine language learning learning with the social network component that you can actually practice your skills with native speakers. Also both of us always had a strong passion for language learning, I speak four languages myself, so I just loved this idea and right after graduation uh, we then founded the business. Um, we stayed then in Spain for about five years, uh, then unfortunately the financial crisis hit Spain relatively hard, it was really difficult to scale our operations, so we moved our entire team from Madrid to London uh, where we're currently based and now we are about 100 people people and we just became profitable as a business. So when we started Buzu in the year 2008, there was basically no ad tech scene in Europe. Ad tech at that time was not really a thing. Um, I think this was also due to the fact that uh, basically people still had a lot of mistrust of using technology in education and also the smartphone didn't exist so you could only use a desktop uh, and therefore you know it was still a bit of a clunky experience that meant that you know there was not a lot of monetization, users were reluctant to pay and therefore there was no funding. Um, so for the first, I guess, two or three years, it was quite hard. Uh, we had to bootstrap uh, our business without any external funding. Um, but luckily, uh, nowadays, the situation in the tech scene in Europe is quite substantially different. So I would say, luckily, there has been a lot of movement uh, in the tech scene in Europe. Um, clearly, uh, you know, companies have evolved. Uh, you can show that you can learn something on a mobile device or on a, on a desktop. The product efficacy has become much better. Um, um, secondly, I think uh, thanks to the likes of Netflix or Spotify, a whole subscription economy has been created. So basically, you know, users are more willing to pay for something, whereas maybe 10 years ago people were complaining that they would need to pay like 2 euros for a course. Uh, nowadays they happily pay 70 dollars or 70 euros uh, for a yearly membership because they also know that the product really works. And that allows tech companies to basically be able to monetize better on their products, which equally then attracts more funding. Um, nevertheless, I guess uh, EdTech in Europe is still massively behind uh, other regions like uh, China or the US. Um, there's still, I think, a lot of uh, reluctancy of uh, educational institutions like schools and universities to use technology uh, in the educational process. Uh, parents are afraid uh, to use technology for the education of their kids. Legislation is massively different. Uh, schools don't always have a budget uh, to invest. So I do think that uh, you know, compared to some of the other regions, it's still very hard to scale an ad tech business in, in Europe. I always say like if, if running a startup uh, is not a sprint but a marathon, I'd say running an ad tech startup is more like an Ironman. Uh, it takes really a long time uh, to be successful because just consumer success takes longer. You know, you can buy a pair of shoes in a question of a few minutes or you book an Uber and you have a ride, you're happy as a customer uh, to learn a language, it takes you probably six to 12 months or, or even longer. So just customer success takes longer and therefore you need to optimize much more uh, about it. You know, um, it's just a harder industry to be in. Nevertheless, especially now with the rise of artificial intelligence, I think we're just uh, entering a new field. For example, we as Busu, we have over 4 billion data points of our users that we now use in order to shine a light into this black box of how you actually learn a language. Whereas before, no one really knew exactly how to do it. Now we can optimize our courses according to the different needs. Uh, and that will massively improve again our effectiveness and uh, you know lead to better learning outcomes. So I think even after 11 years in this industry, I'm, I'm super excited about it and I personally would not like to be in any other industry.
I do think that it's super important to have a stronger collaboration between the research industry and uh, edtech startups. For example, we have done several efficacy um, studies uh, with Imperial College, with Open Universities, with City University of New York, because we are also very interested in you know, taking academia and putting this directly into work in our product of how to improve our, our language learning product. So I think uh, this research is absolutely essential to be put into practice together with startups. And in general, also my, my advice would be also for governments and, and academic institutions to be more open uh, to innovation. We are really, I think, lacking behind uh, other regions like China and the US. We need to catch up. Uh, education is everything, um, so we need to make sure that it's as effective as possible. So we really need to step on the gas and, and be a bit faster.